Hello and welcome back again. Assuming you saw the first video that is anyway. This is a follow-up to my Tipman Model 98 P-Bolt build, which if you didn't see the first video, is a conversion of the electro pneumatic kit to function entirely pneumatically and without any batteries at all. And I did kind of a walkthrough of how that was going to work in a demonstration. And now I actually have the components fitting into the marker, mostly into the marker. I did go with the uh, external part, but I'll demonstrate that. Um, so to run through it again here, what we have is standard bottom line um, going to a high pressure regulator, which actually feeds our valve. And then hanging off of that is a low pressure regulator. And to run the line, I actually milled a sort of cavity into the body here and run the line through the frame into the grip. So the only exposed bit of hose here is this little bit of line right there. I initially did the cut with the mill and then followed up uh, with a Dremel polishing bit to kind of clean up the edges to make sure there wouldn't be anything sharp that could damage that line. So where that goes to is to our main switch here. This is the Fabco MSV2. It's a very common um, switch for paintball mods. Typically I think uh, it's the new cocker and new mag builds people do. It is a, I think a three-way, basically on and off switch that vents, and it has a very light and rapid actuation. The one downside of it, which I, I've decided just to accept, um, when it's held open, it will actually leak a bit of air around the stem. The stem of the valve is not sealed, and that is actually, that is a design choice they made. So this valve is very smooth operating, but you have a slight leak when held open. Not too much of a deal. You know, we're not talking a lot of air, but if you were trying to be the most efficient build possible, this probably wouldn't be the switch you'd go with. In any case, the way this thing actually functions is we have our switch. When you pull the trigger, in fact, I'll just put the trigger back in. Like, so, pull the trigger, air is coming out this line here. And you'll see we actually split right here. One line is going outside up and into this port on our clippered pulse valve. And what is that is doing is supplying air in and opening the pulse valve, which then allows air out of this port, which feeds into our RAM. So we have air comes in, pulse valve opens, air comes out, fires the RAM. The second part of this path here is going into a clippered flow control, which is restricting the flow of air and sending it up to the other side of that pulse valve. So the clippered pulse valve is designed to have an approximately um, 100 millisecond dwell, I guess. Um, which for what we're doing is way too long. We don't want the, we don't want to ram open for 100 milliseconds. So to shorten that dwell, I'm adding basically an additional leak to the pulse valve because the pulse valve is designed to leak internally through the piston so it'll open and then shut again. So I've added an intentional leak that I control with this valve here. So the end result is we get a single quick burst of air from this firing the ram. And that is regardless of how long you hold the trigger. As long as you pulled it enough to fully activate this switch, you're gonna get a nice solid pulse of air. So the trick to adjusting this thing, really the only adjustment is this flow control here. And I'll kind of demonstrate that. I had already adjusted it, but um, 
for the sake of showing how that goes, I will go ahead and mess it up again. Okay, a tank. I'm putting faith into my lines here. Should be okay. Okay, we are aired up. I'm going to deliberately put this valve way open. So now it's going to let a lot of air into the other side of the pulse valve, which should mean a very short pulse or possibly no pulse at all, um, where the valve essentially just closes immediately. Yep, so no pulse at all there. Let me close this a little bit. No pulse. Keep closing it. Now you might have heard a slight difference in that one. We're approaching the flow rate and you'll see the ramp now just starting to move. Now we have it firing. So now it's not fully consistent. Yes, it is aired up. There's nothing over here, um, just so you know. Fairly consistent, but not quite there. Actually, I think we pack this out slightly. Okay. So right about there is where we're going to want to keep it. We have a nice, sharp uh, actuation of the ram, which is what we're looking for. If that was left too long, we would end up with a incredibly long dwell. Get the air out of here. We would end up with an incredibly long dwell, which would hold the valve open far too long. And, um, our air, you know, our efficiency would probably tank pretty quickly. So, now I'll show you kind of how this all's held together. If you can't see it, the pulse valve here, there's a grip frame or a grip screw is coming through the frame and through that hole there. And I modified a pin, one of the stock pins. To hold the other corner. Let's see if I can pull that out. So there's the pin. And you can see I narrowed it down on my lathe, which creates a nice little space for this switch to kind of sit into. So now that stays nicely into place. And as for the flow control here, I actually just used um, double sided, it's gorilla tape at the moment. That wasn't going to be my original plan, but it got the job done and it's holding, so I've left it for now. So to actually put this back together, I'm gonna pull these hoses. Now, for space reasons, I am using little barb fittings here. Um, I would like to use the push, push connects because I can actually get those apart without destroying things, but for now, this is what we got. So, just gotta remember, the one coming up from the bottom is our ram line, the one to the front is the constant, or rather the switched air, and the one here is the restricted airflow. So everything is in place, lines are where I want it, switch is in, don't forget the safety, got the little sight thing in there, I always forget that. So, sneak that through. Okay, that 
goes in. Trigger still moves. That's kind of the check to make sure I didn't screw something up. And let's go ahead and snug these down. Okay, trigger still moves. Without the, uh, there's no spring on the trigger, which I didn't point it out. Without the spring on there, it's kind of easy to bind that trigger up. Uh, but the spring isn't actually needed with the pneumatic setup. So remember, can't really see it, but this hose is going down. So that's our ram, connects to the outlet. This one here on the left was our switched air supply goes into the inlet of the PV1. And this was our restricted air supply, which goes into the top. Normally there actually would not be anything going into the top here. This would just be capped with a screw. And here is the 3D printed cover to hold it all together. I don't have the, I don't know what I did with it, but this is not too much larger actually than the standard E-bolt cover. It's taller to fit all the pneumatics in there, but uh, not too much longer. So it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb compared to that. Just kind of squish it on. Find the correct wrench. Okay. So all together, this is now our P-bolt assembly. And let me just get some of this stuff out of here. So there's really nothing more to it than that. No batteries, no other external hoses. Here's my LPR line running up into the frame. Uh, functionally, it doesn't from, uh, from the user's point of view, this isn't going to work much different than a stock Tipman. Um, you don't have to cock it, you just turn off the safety and go. So let's see if... See if I didn't break it while putting it back together. Okay. Air it up and holding. Safety's off. Working good. So it's hard to, what do I have that could sort of demonstrate how light this trigger is? So you kind of activate it with an O-ring. Yeah, it's not that light. So this is probably akin to, I haven't used my EMEC in a bit, but I think it's similar in feel to an EMEC. You know, it's not a lot of travel. And it's got a nice kind of snappy feel to it. I do like that switch. Now let me demonstrate the, that's the leak if you hold the trigger. But you know, you can hold the trigger and you only get one fire out of it and it doesn't hold the valve open. If you had gone straight from the switch to the ram, holding the trigger would have just held the ram forward and you know, caused all sorts of other problems. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what sort of firing rate this whole assembly could actually sustain because I'm using a lot of air through various fittings and various valves. Um, it's one of the reasons I did not bother trying to cut this frame and I shouldn't be doing that. Um, one of the reasons I didn't cut the frame and try and put on a double trigger, because I don't really think that this will keep up with a double trigger, this particular setup. I do have ideas sort of for a V2, um, which would simply use a volume chamber 
a volume chamber combined with, um, I forget what you call it, another kind of valve, um, but it would take up a bit less space and less components. But that'll probably be, be that'll probably be a different project um, because I would like to actually finish one of my projects for once, and this is pretty close. So what I do have to do next is decide how to actually feed paint into it. I might modify it to do a uh, cyclone because I have the pulse valve, so I could really run any I could run any air driven accessories off this thing if I just put a manifold um, which is kind of neat actually so I could put a manifold of fittings and you just you know plug in whatever accessories you want to run not that there's a whole ton of them there's no space in here for a uh, response trigger I could make one but um, there wouldn't be much point here and I could use like a BT I forget what's called I have one somewhere but it's basically a halo that mounts here, but that would kind of defeat the point if I put a battery powered hopper on there. But anyway, I'll get to choosing how to feed it and then uh, I guess give it a paint job. And I have to decide, the other thing I didn't decide is if I want to mill these gills out. I have mixed feelings about that. Yeah. I think the look can be nice, but I also don't like the fact that it messes up the bore, kind of. Um, and you kind of get air kind of blowing everywhere. But, you know, oil rings and everything can be fine. Alright, well I guess that's it for now. Uh, it's really cool, so I like, like fiddling with it. But, uh... That is it for today. Thank you very much.